Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be doing a little bit of a project. We're going to be seeing if we can install a Linux distribution on the Apple TV first generation. And if you remember a video that I did about two months ago where I did the overview of the Apple TV. This was a device that I got at a garage sale I think for around $10 and I got it specifically to make videos. I wanted to do an overview and a little bit of the, of, uh, the Apple TV's history and how it came to be. And I wanted to do a video seeing if we can install Linux on it and also another video which we're gonna be doing in the future on how to install Mac OS X Tiger, the full-fledged Mac OS X operating system on this. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing the Linux operating system. We're gonna be taking a look at a piece of software called OSMC. And what this operating system basically does is it brings Kodi, which was formerly called XBMC, over to the Apple TV. While Kodi is not an operating system by itself, it's just an application that you can run on top of an operating system. OSMC is a dedicated operating system project based on Debian Linux that uh, has Kodi as its main application that you're going to be using. And what it also does is since it's based on Debian, it's very easy to install a desktop uh, Linux environment. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video a little bit later on. But first, we're going to be going through the process about actually installing OSMC over to the Apple TV, which is pretty simple to do. But I just want to give a brief overview of OSMC on its uh, website here. So you can download this at osmc.tv and it supports a, a, a couple of different platforms. So we'll go ahead and go up here to the download page and you can install this on any of these Raspberry Pi models right here. You can install it on the Vera, which is OSMC's flagship uh, product that actually is a dedicated media center device made by this company. Or you can do it on the Apple TV first generation because of the fact that the Apple TV first gen, as I said in my overview video, is more of like a uh, slimmed down computer because it has things like a desktop processor. It has like an Intel um, x86 based processor, unlike uh, the Apple TV second gen and above, which are just dedicated streaming boxes that don't contain an Intel based processor. So that's why you can only do this on the Apple TV first gen. Um, but it's a very easy installation process. All you have to do is go to this installation area here and click on one of these three automated installers. You've got Windows, OS 10, and Linux. And if you really wanted to, you could also go down here to where it says disk images and you can download a individual disk image for whatever device that you're using. So in my case, I would scroll down here and go to Apple TV one and I could download this, which is a IMG.GZ file that I can use something like Win32 Disk Imager to burn over to uh, my USB flash drive. And that's something else that I, I want to uh, mention as well. What's very cool about OSMC is that you don't have to overwrite the Apple firmware on the Apple TV to actually get this to work. You can install on a USB flash drive and plug that into the Apple TV, which will then allow you to try out OSMC and see if you like it. And if you really like it, you can then overwrite the Apple TV firmware itself and uh, just install OSMC as the default operating system on it. So once you download the OSMC installer, you just wanna go ahead and run it, which I'm gonna go ahead and do here. All right, so here is the OSMC installer. And again, as I said, it's a very easy to follow along installer. All we have to do is go and, and uh, give answers to each of these prompts that it has here. So it's going to say, please select your language. We're gonna choose English. It's the only one that is supported. And we're going to select what device we want to install OSMC on, which is the Apple TV. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click on next here. And now it's going to ask me what version I want to install. Now, you've got a couple of uh, different versions of the operating system by the date that they were published. So the latest one as of this video is August 1st, 2017. Now you'll notice that we've got two different options. We've got a USB option and an HDD option. Now the USB option is probably what you're gonna to wanna to use because this will allow you to install OSMC onto the USB flash drive and you'll be able to plug it into the Apple TV and 
uh, run the OS off of the USB flash drive without having to touch anything on the Apple TV itself. So you won't have to overwrite the uh, default Apple firmware. If you want to overwrite the default Apple firmware and make OSMC the only operating system on the Apple TV to where you won't have to plug in the USB drive to boot from it, you want to choose the HDD option. Now this is what I've done. Then we're going to click on the next arrow and this is where things can get a little confusing because it doesn't actually allow you to change um, where you want to install OSMC2 for whatever reason. Uh, the only option it has is on an SD card which you may think might not work but it does because when we go ahead and click on next you can see that here is our uh, flash drive right here. It's in the L drive on my computer and this is an 8 gig USB flash drive USB 2.0. So it does uh, recognize it here so we're going to go ahead and have this selected and click on next. We're going to accept the end user license agreement and that is all there is to it. It's going to go ahead and download the latest version of OSMC and then it's going to write it over to our USB flash drive which then once we got all that done we can go ahead and plug it into our Apple TV and actually get this thing up and running. All right so here we are on the back side of the Apple TV. Now what you want to do here is you want to obviously get your USB drive that you've just written the OSMC um, operating system to and all you have to do is plug this drive into the USB port on the back. Now, if you had chosen the USB option during the installation, all you then have to do is plug in the power cord to your Apple TV and you'll be set to go. It will immediately start to boot off of the USB drive. Now, if you had chosen the HDD option like I did, you're going to want to plug in the power option and then you're going to have to follow a uh, step on the screen where it's actually going to ask you to unplug the USB drive and the power and plug it back in. All right, so once you went through the OSMC, whether you went through the installation or you just booted off of the USB drive, this is the screen that you're going to be presented with afterwards. So this is the same from here on out for both the USB and the HDD in installation methods. Now, what I've gone ahead and done is I have plugged in a USB keyboard because I don't have the Apple TV remote. So uh, just to make it to where I can actually navigate this, I'm going to use a keyboard. Now, again, it's super nice that uh, OSMC allows you to do this, but that's basically just because it's based off of Linux um, and it's going to automatically support a USB mouse and keyboard right out of the box. So I'm just go ahead and press the down arrow key to get to English. Uh, English US, I guess, is probably what we should choose. I'm going to press enter. We're going to confirm. And now it's going to ask us our time zone. Now I am in America and I'm in the New York time zone. And you can choose to give the device a name. We'll just keep it at OSMC. That's fine. And now it's going to ask you if you want to enable uh, SSH. Now this will basically allow you, as it says, to just... Um, uh, remote into this device from an, uh, another computer. I'm sure you all know how SSH works, but we'll go ahead and just keep that enabled because that is the uh, default option. If we want to accept the uh, license agreement. We'll go ahead and set up networking later because I don't have an Ethernet cable plugged into this. And we can choose between uh, two separate interfaces. OSMC has actually uh, developed their own interface here for Kodi, or you can go with the classic Kodi interface here. I'm just gonna, get, gonna go ahead and choose the OSMC one just for this video. We're not gonna sign up to receive the newsletter, and that's it. So it says you're not ready to enjoy OSMC. If you need any help, uh, go to osmc.tv forward slash help. They've got a, a, a bunch of you know resources online. They've got a wiki and I believe like a form as well. So there's a lot of uh, info on their website. We're just going to go ahead and click on exit. And here we are. We're now at the OSMC menu. And I can go through. I mean, using like a keyboard is not the best method of navigating this menu here. You would normally use the Apple TV remote because that does still work with this. All right, so now let's actually take a look at, at trying to get a desktop Linux environment running on this thing. Now, for this to work, you are going to need to connect your Apple TV to an Ethernet port. Now, I have already done that, so I have uh, plugged in uh, an Ethernet cable to the back, so it is on my network now. And what I want to do is from here, you want to scroll down uh, or you know use the uh, remote or even the mouse or the keyboard like I'm doing here, and scroll down to where it says power. Now you are going to need to have a, a, a keyboard plugged in for this to work because we're going to basically be accessing the terminal. So what you want to do is press enter on power and you want to press exit, so press enter once again. As soon as you do this, start to immediately press the uh, escape key repeatedly. 
because what we want to do is normally when you go into exit here it will just restart uh, OSMC's interface or the Kodi interface if you press escape it will stop doing that and it will bring you up to this prompt right here that says OSMC login what you want to do here is login with uh, the name OSMC and then for the password do OSMC again Okay, if you've done that correctly, you will log into uh, the terminal here. All right, so we have successfully logged into the OSMC text only mode here. And I've tried to set up the camera in the best possible way to where you can kind of see what I'm actually doing super up close um, because this TV is like a 24 or a 32 inch TV. So I just kind of want to keep it to where you can actually see what I'm doing. So before we actually go ahead and install a uh, Linux desktop environment, the first thing that I would recommend doing is running a ping command. And what this will do is it will basically just uh, confirm that your Apple TV is able to reach out to the internet. So we're gonna go ahead and ping youtube.com here and press enter and you can see that we're getting a few different replies back from that IP address there so that basically you know just confirms that we are able to reach out to the network so once you have done that you want to uh, go ahead and run a sudo apt hyphen get update and what this will do is it will update all of the different package repositories on your system which needs to be able to reach out to the internet for it to do this so that's why you want to make sure by running that ping command that your system is actually able to reach out to the internet so you can see that uh, i mean we can't really see at the bottom there but it's just uh, reloading the package lists there and once it finishes doing that we're, we're back at the prompt there so let me go ahead and uh, clear that out and now the very last command that you want to run is sudo apt hyphen get install and then you want to type in the name of whatever desktop environment that you want to install now there's multiple options that you can choose from there's gnome kde but in this example i'm going to be using lxde just because it is a very lightweight interface and it's very easy on system resources and that's definitely something that we need to take into account with the apple tv first gen because it only has like 256 megs of ram and it has a you know pretty old intel uh, based processor so just to keep it simple we're going to install lxde now once you have successfully installed lxde and it's gone through that whole process all you have to do to actually start it is type in start x and when you do that it will begin to load the x window server and it will actually uh, start to boot up into a desktop interface so i've gone ahead and panned the uh, camera down here so you can see uh, the it's not called the start menu, but it's you know like the little menu in the uh, left hand corner, the bottom left hand corner. There's a mouse cursor coming up on the screen right now, and there we go. You see we have the LXDE menu here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the mouse so that I can actually you know go ahead and like navigate this system. So yeah, this does work as you can see, but I've only encountered just one little problem, and that is when I go to the menu here. Oh my gosh, look at how small that this text is. Like, I cannot read what any of this says. I don't know what uh, this is caused by. I assume it's like a driver problem. I assume it doesn't have the proper, like, display driver installed. But man, like, this is, I mean, you, you can't even read any of this. It's so tiny. I mean, I can barely, like, I can tell there's a gear there. I believe this is the terminal here. Let me go ahead and open that up. Yeah, just check out how small this window is here. That's definitely usable. I can totally, like, you can't read anything. I can't even click the close button. I mean, look at this. Like, you, like the mouse cursor is about the size of the corner of this window. It's like, oh my gosh, it's like crazy. But I, I can almost, let me see if I can close out of it. I mean, look at the, look at the right click menu. Like, like, look at this. I mean, can you see what any of that says? I don't even know if it's coming up on the camera very well, but it's like everything is so tiny. It's insane. I mean, look at that. So yeah, that is the only problem that I've encountered. I've tried changing the system resolution because I was able to open up <laughs> and find that, uh, you know, window properties. I believe it's actually, um, I believe it's this one here. It comes up with this window, which again, I can't really see. Um, or no, no, it wasn't this one. Which one was it? I think it was this one. Yeah, it was this one here. So this one, I, I can't tell what resolution I'm changing this to, but when I click on OK, I don't know what I put it to, but it does actually change the system resolution. Uh, 
we'll see if it actually comes back up here so yeah you can see that everything is a lot we'll go ahead and keep that actually um, but you can see that it doesn't help with any of the text. It makes the windows a lot larger, but you can't see any of the text still. It's still like incredibly small. So I don't really know if this is an issue that everybody is is uh, having or if this is just something that I'm having. Uh, but I can't really... I mean, I have to assume that it's like a driver problem. That's what I would think. But this is a fresh install of LXDE. It's not like that I modified anything. So I don't know. But honestly, that is probably going to go ahead and wrap it up for this video because there's not really much else that I can do here. I mean, I can take you guys through all of these menus, but you won't be able to read anything, so it would kind of be pointless. But, um, yes, so is it possible to uh, run a desktop uh, Linux environment on the Apple TV first gen? Yes, but uh, I would try to experiment with some other ones, maybe see if LXDE works for you, and if not, if it does this same thing, maybe try something like, you know, GNOME or KDE, which are a lot more resource in uh, intensive than LXDE, but you may be able to actually see what you're doing, which is definitely a huge plus. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this video off here. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up and be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on notifications to get notified whenever that I upload new videos on this channel, which I do every single week. And uh, be sure to drop me a comment letting me know your thoughts on this whole like process. Is this something that you would actually do? Have you done this before? And have you had this issue going on with LXDE on the Apple TV? I mean, I can kind of make this out better, but it's still, it's still in incredibly small. But be sure to uh, let me know down in, in, in the uh, comments below. And as always, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. And... Uh, wish you guys a little bit of a late Happy New Year because yes, this is the first video in 2019. So happy 2019, everybody. I, I hope you're having a great year. And as always, I will see you in the next video.